Hello everyone and welcome back to tutorial 7 of MIE 100, the dynamics course in the University of Toronto. Today we're going to be uh, talking about dynamics of rigid bodies and we're going to be focusing on plane of kinematics of rigid bodies. Um, I'm going to be solving three problems with you. There's going to be some new material that we're going to be discussing. And um, if you have any questions, please leave your question in the comments below. Okay, so let's start with our first question here. The mechanism shown rotates about the vertical axis with an initial angular velocity. Initially, the two masses are in a horizontal plane as shown by the solid lines. A hinging system internal to the mechanism then lowers the two masses to 30 degrees from the horizontal plane, as shown in the diagram by the dashed lines. The masses are each 600 grams, and the original distance of each mass from the rotating axis is 200 millimeters. If the mechanism is freely spinning, what is the angular velocity of the mechanism after the masses are lowered? Okay. So let's start with our part A of the question. So we want to basically find theta dot 2, the angular velocity. So we're going to go call back to our conservation of angular momentum rules. So So that's going to be h1 is going to be equal to h2 the angular momentum in the first part of the um in the first part of the system is going to be equal to the second part of the system. So that's going to be equal to 2mv1 D is equal to 2mv2 D cosine theta 2. Now theta 2 is 30 degrees. So this is theta 2. And it's 2 because we have two masses here. Right? And um, now we're going to try to find what V is equal to. So we're going to go back to our kinematics of curvilinear motion. We know that V is equal to R theta dot. Therefore, when we plug that into our equation, we get we substitute v with d theta dot. So it becomes 2m d squared theta dot 1 is equal to 2m d squared cosine squared theta 2 theta dot 2. And then we're going to cancel out all of these variables because there's the same. This is our theta 2 over here. And that gives us theta dot 1 is equal to theta dot 2 cosine squared 30. When we plug in our, um, our values, we get 2 is equal to theta dot 2 cosine squared 30 which gives us theta dot 2 is equal to 2.67 per second, radians per second. Okay, now let's go to part B of our question. So in part B, it says a motor on the shaft is then turned on for three seconds and returns the rotational speed of the shaft to two radians per second. The masses stay, or sorry, two degrees per second. So the masses stay in the dash configuration. What is the average moment supplied by the motor? Okay, so now for part B, we wanna find 
the average momentum. Okay. <clears throat> so we know that T3 is equal to 3 seconds and theta dot 3 is 2 degrees per second. We also know that R is going to be equal to D cosine theta 2, exactly like R2. R1 was just D. Now we're going to draw the diagram in position 2. So in position 2, these are what the masses look like. Okay. This is the theta. It's going in an angular momentum, theta dot 2. And the momentum is going in the opposite direction. So this is at t is equal to t2, which is 0. Okay, we're starting from the beginning. Now, in step 3, it look, it's in the exact same position. So this is also 30 degrees. But this time, the angular momentum is different. The moment is also going to be in the opposite direction. So this is at t is equal to t3, which is 3 seconds. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about some new material to discuss. So new material. So this is the equation for the angular impulse momentum pr principle. So angular... Impulse momentum principle. This is when we have a moment acting on the system. So what is that moment going to be equal to? We're going to integrate from T1 to T2 the sum of moments, which is equal to HO2 minus HO1, or delta HO. We can rewrite it into H1 plus the integral of sum of moments is equal to H2. So this basically means that the, total, that the total angular impulse about a fixed point is equal to the corresponding change in angular momentum. So let's go back to our problem now. This would mean that if the counterclockwise was positive, HO2 minus the integral of moments is going to be equal to HO3. Once we plug in our equations, we can get the value for the average momentum to be equal to the integral of moment of the momentum over t3 minus t2 so that would mean that delta t, t3 minus, or t3 minus t2, multiplied by the average momentum 
it's just going to be equal to this. And when we plug that into our, when we plug this into, sorry, once we plug this into our equation back here, we can get delta t mo average is equal to 2 md squared cosine squared theta 2 multiplied by theta dot 2 minus theta dot 3. Now, we, now it's time to plug in our known values. So 3 and our average is equal to 2 multiplied by 0 0.6, 0 0.2 squared, cosine squared 30, 2.67 minus 2 to give us a final answer of 8.04 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons meters. And this is in the positive direction, so it's going this way. Now that we found the answer for part B, we're going to go back to part C here. And part C is asking for how much work is done by the motor. So part C is asking for the work. If we recall back to our conservation of energy equations, we know that the sum of kinetic energy plus work is equal to the sum of kinetic energy um, in step three. So if we plug in our equations, it's going to give us two, because there's two masses, half mv2 squared plus u23 is equal to two half mv3 squared. Then if we do a little rearranging and plug in our um, and plug in our known equations. So we're going to substitute this v with our theta dot, which is going to give us d cosine theta multiplied by theta dot 3 squared minus d cosine theta multiplied by theta dot 2 also squared. And when we simplify this equation, we get md squared cosine squared theta. Theta is 30 degrees, by the way. Theta dot 3 squared minus theta dot squared. <clears throat> and once we plug in our known variables, 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.2 squared, cosine squared 30 multiplied by 2 squared minus 2.67 squared. Get the value for work is equal to minus 0 0.0563 joules. And this is the final answer. Now for our second problem. We've got motion of the rectangular plate B is controlled by the two lengths which cross without touching. For the instant represented where the lengths are perpendicular to each other, the plate has a counterclockwise angular velocity of 2 rad per radians per second. Determine the corresponding angular velocities of the two lengths. Um, knowing that the angular velocities are positive if counterclockwise, negative or clockwise. Okay, so our known values here are the angular velocity of P is two radians per second, which is all which is also equal to the angular velocity of A B. EO is zero point six meters. 
it is 0 0.5 meters and this way counterclockwise is positive and we want to find out the angular velocity of AO this length and BD this length okay so first of all let's discuss some new material So <clears throat> when we have a rotation about a fixed axis, we want to find the velocity, right? So rotation about a fixed axis. Vector equivalent. We know what the velocity is equal to. We know that V is equal to R theta dot. But what is it equal to in terms of vectors? V is equal to the angular velocity, um, the cross product of the angular velocity with R, which is the radius, the, the normal acceleration is going to be equal to the cross product of the angular velocity and the angular velocity with radians. Now, the tangential acceleration is equal to alpha, the cross product of alpha with radians, but we can get to those later. For now, we want to focus on the velocity. So, in this case, we have VA, the velocity of A, is going to be equal to the angular velocity of A uh, from uh, from from uh, the origin to a cross product r a o which is just the length of the link because here is the fixed system and it's rotating around that point so the length is what we call the radi um the radius. VB is going to be very similar. It's going to be cross product of the angular velocity of BD multiplied by the length of that link. Now we're going to talk about relative motion. Now we know that VAB is going to be equal to VA minus VB. So when we plug in our values, our equations, into this equation over here, we get mega AB multiplied by RAB is equal to mega AO multiplied by cross product, I mean, RAO minus angular velocity of BD cross product with the length of the length of the link BD now um, if we draw the links over here again to find the exact length of each link we know that this distance over here is 0 0.2 meters and this distance over here is also 0 0.2 meters. Knowing that this length over here is 0 0.5, then this part over here is going to be equal to 0 0.3 meters. And knowing that the length AO is 0 0.6, so we know that this over here is 0 0.4 meters. Okay, now that we've known all of that, we can plug in some values. We know that the angular velocity of AB is equal to the angular velocity of P, which is just 2k cross product with minus 0 0.3i. Uh, I. That's from A to B. Let me just label them again here. So this point here is A, this is B, this is the origin, and this is D. 
correct? Yes. So <clears throat> from A to B, we're going to go, um, I'm sorry, from B to A, we're going to go minus 0.3i plus 0.4j from B to A. Now we're going to do the exact same thing again with link AO. So AOK multiplied by from A from O to A is 0.6j minus the angular velocity of link BD. And going from D to B is going to be 0.5i. Now, you know how to cross product, but I'm just going to show it to you again here briefly. We've got i, j, and k. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you only with this one over here. So, 0, 0, 2, and we've got minus 0 0.3 here, 0 0.4 here, and 0 here. And the way I do cross product is, first of all, I multiply those over here, and then I multiply those over here. So that would give me 0 minus 0.8i. And then I, uh, I multiply those over here and then those over here. I'm sorry if it's a mess. But that will give me 0 minus, um, minus 0.6j. But again, because the j is always negative, that's going to give me in total minus 0.6j. This is going to give me minus 0.8i. And once I go on to the k, it's just going to be zeros both ways. 0 minus 0. Okay. So now that you know how to do cross, multi uh, uh, cross product, we're going to plug in our values. So it's minus 0.8i minus 0.6j is equal to minus 0.6 angular velocity of AD, I mean, sorry, AO, I, minus 0 0.5, the angular velocity of BD, J. So now that we know that minus 0 0.8, I is equal to minus 0 0.6 omega AO, I, we can solve for, we have, we now have two equations and two unknowns because this is equal to this and this is also equal to this. So now we're gonna plug in, we're gonna solve our two equations. Minus 0.8i is equal to minus 0 0.6 mega o a o i which gives us the angular velocity of link A equal to 1.33 radians per second in the k direction. And now we're going to do the same thing to our other equation. So minus 0.6j is equal to minus 0.5 omega b d j. And that's going to give us the angular velocity for link BD is equal to 1.2k rad radians per second. And that's the answer, of, these are the answers for problem two. And now for our last problem of our tutorial, at the instance shown in the figure, point B of the T-shaped bar has a velocity of 1 meters per second in the I direction and an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared also in the I direction. Determine the velocity of point D in the XY coordinates. So let's take care of that first. We've got VB is 1 meters per second. AB is 2 meters per second squared, and 
AC is equal to CB, which is equal to CD, and they are all equal to 1 meters. And we want to know for part A, the velocity of point D. Now, calling back to our relative motion equation or rule, <clears throat> we know that V dB, so if you want to know the velocity of B relative to D, it's going to be equal to the velocity of D minus the velocity of B. And if we recall back to our previous equation, uh, to our previous problem, the vector rotation about a fixed axis, we know that the angular velocity cross product with the radius or the length of the length db is going to be equal to vd minus vpp. So I just plugged in this equation here into this equation here. Now to find the value for RDB, we want to look at that link over here. So we've got So we've got point D here, C, and B. And this length is equal to one meter. This length is also equal to one meter. Therefore, because it's a right, tri right angle triangle, therefore, this is equal to root two meters. So once we plug that into our equation, we've got minus omega, root 2i is equal to vd minus 1i because we know the value for vb is 1i. Now going back to our relative motion, vab is equal to va minus vb. So that's the velocity of b relative to a. And we're going to plug in our vector rotation equation into this VAB to get omega, or the angular velocity, cross product, RAB is equal to VA minus, again, we know the value for VB is 1i. Now we're going to take a look at the link at this point over here. So A and B. And the length between A and B is not 1 meters. In fact, it's 2 meters because this is 1 meter and this is 1 meter. And therefore, because this is a right angle triangle, the distance here is gonna be root two, and here it's also gonna be root two meters. So to plug that in into our equation, the, um, the distance of B relative to A is gonna be equal to minus root two I, plus root 2j. That's just RAB. And then we're going to plug that into our equation over here to get minus root 2 omega i plus root 2 omega j is equal to VAJ minus 1i. Now why is it VAJ? If you think about it, if we go back to, to this diagram over here, if point B moves in the I direction this way, point B can only move in the, in the, in the J direction 
down here. That's just how the link is going to be able to work. So as, as B moves in the X direction or in the I direction, A can only move in the J or Y direction. Now with that being said, we have this is equal to this and this is equal to this. So we have again two equations and two unknowns. So it's going to be pretty straightforward to solve. So minus root 2 omega i is equal to minus 1 i. Which will give us the angular velocity equal to 0 0.707 radians per second. Now I'm sorry, let me go back to the, qu to the question. For part A, they said determine the velocity of point D in the x and y coordinates. But in part B, it says determine the angular velocity of the T-shaped bar. So we've actually accidentally solved for part B before we solved for part A. But, you know, that's good because we just um, found it without even trying to solve for it. And now going back to finding the velocity of D, we're just going to plug in our value for, uh, for the angular velocity into our problem here. Uh, where did it go? Yep, yeah. into this equation over here to find d. So that's going to give us minus 0 0.707, which is just the angular velocity, multiplied by root 2i is equal to vd minus 1i. After solving for that equation, we get Vd is equal to 0 meters per second. And that's the end of our problem. That was the end of our tutorial. Thank you so much for sticking around. Again, if you have any questions, leave your question in the comments below or email me on nord.doedar at mail.utorana.ca. I'm always happy to answer any of your questions, so please don't hesitate, and see you next week.